Libertarian Party nominate RFK Jr. as its candidate in late May. That's when the convention happens here in Washington. Might know someone who has that answer. Joining us now is the chair of the Libertarian National Committee, Angela McCardle. Angela, thanks for being with us here on the Hill. Appreciate the time. So are, are, are you actively recruiting RFK Jr. right now? I'm not allowed to actively recruit anyone for the for the presidential nomination. I'm certainly friendly with his campaign, just like I am with all the other candidates' campaigns, though. What'd you make of his comments last night? You mean about being open to seeking our nomination? I mean, I think that's the yeah. wise thing to do. Anybody who is an independent and is liberty-minded or perceives themselves to be liberty-minded should be looking at our ballot access. Uh, not only do we have ballot access in a majority of states, and, and we intend to, to reclaim it at 50 states again in 2024, but we have the experience and the ground game to do it. It's taken decades of institutional memory and, and learning and practice to get it done. And so, you know, of course, um, of course, I'm sure we're appealing right now. W would you consider him the favorite at this point in time? No, I don't think that we have any favorites right now. And that's not a knock against him. You know, we have a very ornery group of delegates. They're very interested in finding the best, most principled messenger, uh, someone who represents us ideologically. And uh, we're all, we also have a group of people who are very focused on ballot access. And of course, having Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as our candidate would absolutely seal ballot access for us. But it's not decided yet. Right. So, um... He's a Kennedy, obviously, Democratic uh, sure. name, Democratic, uh, obviously, the, the, you know, legendary Democratic name. Here's what he told Elizabeth Vargas during the town hall, uh, town hall with News Nation uh, in the middle of last year. I'll get your reaction on the other side. My plan is to win this election, and I don't have a plan B. Okay. <laughs> He said he didn't have a plan B, and clearly he does, because he left the Democratic Party. Are you, do, do you worry at all that he is, would, could potentially simply just use the Libertarian Party for the ballot access? I mean, define worry and define use. I think that if he became our nominee, there would be an understanding with us that he doesn't 100% represent us ideologically. He is getting uh, ballot access by using our name and branding. And in return, we are securing ballot access for the future. And, uh, you know, whether or not it's uh, for better or worse, we would also be potentially unlocking some federal funding. So it's really, if that happens, it's going to have to be a conscious decision of the delegates and uh, a mutually beneficial relationship. Uh, Ms. McCardle, it's Chris Steyerwalt, and I just wanted to quickly ask you. I asked uh, Mr. Kennedy last night about the fact that he is a person who spent most of his career prior to this uh, as an advocate for regulation, right? He was somebody who mm -hmm. was looking for, especially on environmental issues, looking for more regulation, more government intervention. He had an answer last night where he tried to square the circle by saying that he favors market solutions yeah. uh, for dealing with uh, environmental problems. You're not supposed to be giving advice to anybody who's seeking your party's nomination, I know, but can you talk a little bit about the tension, if there's tension there between the libertarian uh, uh, electorate, as it were, and Kennedy's track record? Sure. Well, I'll say I give advice to all of them. I just can't be playing favorites. <laughs> okay. And, you know, the the talk that he gave at Freedom Fest, which is one of the biggest libertarian um, gatherings in the country in July, uh, was, was really good. And he talked about free markets, uh, solutions to environmental issues. And it seems as though he's had a sincere awakening on this issue. Uh, and, and if he has, you know, I absolutely applaud that. I want to hear free market solutions to problems that people are concerned about. I think that he, along with a lot of other people, had some pretty significant paradigm shifts over the last few years. People really saw the government response to, to COVID, well, you know, with it being lockdowns and mandates and, and started questioning a lot of their other beliefs as well. And I think that that's probably something that happened with him when it comes to regulatory frameworks or schemes. All right. As I Angela McCardle, we, we appreciate the time and we hope you come on back here on the Hill. Uh, your, your convention at the end of May and we'll talk to you before then. Angela, thanks so much. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you for watching and make sure you go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below. 
to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.